before getting into the more complicated individual uh, signaling pathways, I'm just going to go over a, a kind of like a major overview of the, or a basic overview of the major signaling pathways involved in converting this extracellular ligand into an intracellular response. So this is your signaling cell here, and here's the ligand that it's releasing. So let's do this side first. It's going to bind to this receptor, and this receptor is just an integral membrane protein. And right here is the effector. So let's do this whole pathway in blue. So this is the effector. Molecule. So this effector molecule will come down here and activate this second messenger. So this can be anything from something like uh, IP3 to calcium, and this will activate and bind to another molecule of some sort, which will activate another molecule, which may activate a molecule over here, and then this activates a molecule right here, and then this one ends up leading to some sort of response signal like uh, transcription. So it'll go into the nucleus and be a transcription factor or telling the cell it's in survival mode or it should undergo apoptosis, which is programmed cell death, um, or it should move or make a protein. So these are just a few of the different things that a chemical uh, signal can do. So this second messenger will activate this, which might be a kinase. This kinase will activate this uh, different enzyme by phosphorylating it. That is how a kinase activates another protein, by turning it on by adding a phosphate group to it. And this will also probably be a kinase because it is activating this protein. And then this will have kinase activity to activate this protein. And this protein might be a transcription factor or some sort of signaling pathway that activates uh, protein synthesis or apoptosis um, or movement and or um, protein synthesis. So there's a lot of different things that can go on. Uh, the same type of thing happens on this side. So let's look at this. This is a phosphate group, let's say right here, which will then bind to this molecule here. Right, and that molecule will bind to this one right here. This will then phosphorylate this molecule. This one will move over here and phosphorylate this one. And then this one will come all the way down here and phosphorylate this molecule. And this, let's pretend this is just a weird massive enzyme. And then this will lead to one of these responses. And there could be a bunch of different other things here. This could go up here. And you know, it's, it's a downstream pathway, but you never know where these proteins are activating, or, or this one could come up here and activate some sort of protein here that causes a signal to be released out here and causes communication with a different cell on the outside of the membrane. Or this one can go all the way over here, or this molecule can travel into the nucleus and cause some DNA to be made, some mRNA, or yes, yeah, some mRNA to be made, and then a protein to be synthesized, which and a protein could be one of these kinases that's used in these signaling pathways. So that's just a kind of a basic overview of the different signaling pathways that are used in. I'm going to get way more into detail about which uh, individual proteins are used in each one of these pathways, but I just wanted to give kind of an overview of how this single, single uh, molecule, oops, sorry, I forgot to draw this one here. This uh, single ligand here released can cause such a massive, massive pathway of all these different enzymes being activated or deactivated or moved around in the cell, causing all these different types of cellular responses. And the cells are so dynamic, they're always undergoing these different signaling pathways within the cell and on the outside of the cell. They're moving, they're staying still, they're dividing. There's so much going on in cells that we can't see with the naked eye. We can see with a microscope or certain types of microscopes, but even these signaling pathways, it's hard to see. Uh, you can't see what's actually going on. You have to eliminate one of the enzymes and see which signaling pathway gets disrupted. So it's once again a, a uh, problem with, uh, or a process of reduction. That's what uh, biology is, a reductionist science. 
So that's it for this video. In the next videos, I'm going to get into actual um, what second messengers are used, what types of kinases are use it, used, what types of integral proteins are used for this type of uh, signaling that we're going to be talking about.